Hello, today is May 15th, 2017, and we're at the Museum of Local History at 190 Anza Street. And I'm Patricia Shafarsik, and I'm interviewing, please, Carol Zilli, Carol DiGiulio Zilli. My dad was born in Niles. His name, please. His name, Louis, Louis Joseph DiGiulio, uh, but known to everyone as Louis. And he was born on Vallejo Street in a house that my grandmother owned. And um, he was actually, that would have been, uh, huh, I could get the birth date right, uh, March 7th, 1909. Um, and what is an interesting story is that, um, first of all, he lived in Niles all his life because he loved this town so much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have too. I just went to. <laughs> San Jose to be born because there wasn't Washington Hospital here, but I came right back. But when he was, I think maybe nine or ten, they moved the house that he was born in to its present site, which is on G, actually it's more on uh, G, uh, in between G and Niles Boulevard and 2nd Street. And he actually sat in the living room of the house as they moved it. <laughs> but they couldn't come under the underpass at the end of town. It wouldn't fit. They couldn't come under the Sullivan underpass. So they had to go down a nursery avenue and bring the house in that way. And I say this because my dad loved to move houses. <laughs> so when he bought his property in Tahoe, uh, he was going to build on it, but then decided, because we used to stay at this uh, Blue Jay Motel, since the owners were going to remodel the whole unit, the whole complete motel, that he bought that house, it was a two-story cabin, and moved it <laughs> down <laughs> Highway 50 and put it on our lot. So he was a car dealer, but he was also in the house movie. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's anyway, amazing. So yeah. what was the address of the house on G Street oh, now? Gosh, Do you know I the address? I know that. I don't know if I recall <clears throat> right now. Mm. But where the American Garage was, the, his car dealership, it was just right behind it. Okay. So it's right on the same parcel. Right. Um, but I just found that story interesting of how they moved it and the fact that he sat in the house when they moved it. And how old was he when they moved it? That's what I was, I could be not accurate on this, but he was probably nine or ten. I nine think. or ten yeah, years old. So I about think. 1919 it got moved. I think so, because my grandmother built that building where the garage is uh, still located, the two-story, a little prior to 1926, because he began his tow service in 1926. So it had to be a little bit, maybe the early 1920s that uh, Oh, that that's happened. interesting. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so your father was uh, one of three children, I one understand. He was the oldest. And uh, they all went to Niles Elementary oh, School. Oh, yes, yes. He went to Niles Elementary when it was closer to Vallejo Street. I believe it was located um, when you're coming Niles Boulevard, after you go under the underpass and you're heading right for Mission. I think it was on the left there. I've seen some pictures at the school. Uh, and that's where he attended it. And then, of course, my uncle. My uncle Chet DiGiulio, he went there, and then all of my family has, <laughs> of course, including myself, my three children, and now, starting in September of, of 2017, my grand, my granddaughter will be going to Oh school. my goodness! What so a that's just boy! You're the fun. oldest residents of, yeah, I think I, the Nile schools because yeah, you started the I one before. I love this town and. and don't intend to leave it. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Unless so let's sort of get back then. Uh, your parents, uh, when were you born and uh, where? And tell right. about the circumstances of you right. growing up and your brothers and sisters right. or sisters. Right. Okay. Uh, so I was born January 27, 1945. <laughs> as I said, only in San Jose because there wasn't a hospital here. So it was O'Connor Hospital. Came right back and lived in our uh, let's see, let's go back to the house that we first lived in was the duplex on G Street, across from where the American Garage is, kind of kitty corner. Um, in my younger days, that, that's where we were, but then my dad had the house built now, uh, which is on Hillview, the corner of Hillview and 2nd, 210 Hillview Drive, when, I think it was the 1950s, around the early 1950s, I would have been almost 10, maybe. 
But um, then that terrible flood happened in 1955. I'll never forget that. And uh, it was like an ocean outside of our windows. And it was Christmas, so Christmas trees were floating in houses and packages. And uh, we, my dad took us on his shoulder, my sister and I, and walked us, and my mom and my brother with the dog, <laughs> down to Niles School. That was where people were being gathered. Um, but we had three feet of water in that house, and we were out of it for months and months. And so, luckily, my grandmother had apartments up above where the old American garage was. We stayed in those apartments for months because the mud, then the hardwood flooring, which would keep buckling up because it would never dry out completely, you know. That was a frightening experience. So tell me a little bit more about that, yeah. about the flood. How, did, how do you remember it happening Right. Um, and learning about it? Right. Well, like I said, I was probably in fifth grade, and there was no warning because it was an accident. If someone forgot to... And I should know the better this better part of it, but it was a, a human error where the it wasn't closed off, and so the water escaped because we had lots of rain that that, that winter season. I remember, so it took everyone by surprise, and I didn't realize our house at the end of Hillview, right when you come to Second and Hillview, was so low because. Now that we ride our bikes, we, you know, and you can feel how it declines. I, I never thought about it. And that's why we got so much water in our house. It was three feet. Um, but then as you walk toward Niles School, then there was less and less. And it was fine there for a shelter for people, you know. But frightening, mm, just, just like you couldn't believe it. People were in boats. And as I said, you could see Christmas trees and ho homes that were floating and uh, packages. Oh, <laughs> and I, of course, begged my dad for a piano. He had bought me a spinet, and that spinet was destroyed. Uh, my brother was taking accordion lessons. His accordion was gone. My sister had the violin. She was taking violin lessons, and all, all of our instruments were, were destroyed. And that was heartbreaking because, I mean, I, oh, I always oh. wanted to play piano. But he replaced it later on with another piano. So, I mean, what time of night did it happen, oh, and how were you was, warned? Yeah. I mean, we were only warned because we looked out the window and saw. I don't know if my mother got a phone. I don't know if there was a phone call. My dad was not home, I don't think. So he came with his truck. Uh, but you looked up, we just looked out the window. And, and what it, did you see? It was like an ocean. Like but it wasn't streets. in your house yet? Not yet, but as we opened the back door, it was right at the doorstep in the back there of our back, the back of our house. So my dad, he pulls up with his truck, and we didn't know what, we, what to gather, whatever. We just went with him, and he carried my sister and I. So we were in fifth grade. She's 13 months younger. And then we get in the truck. He pulls out of the driveway, the dog's in the truck, my mom and my brother and sister. And he starts to go, and our neighbor was so panicked. She was on her front porch there just crying and screaming, help me, help me, because she was by herself. So my dad got, stopped the, the truck, got out, and went to get her and brought her to the car. By the time he got to the truck, by the time he got back to the truck, the motor died, and he couldn't get it to start again. Oh, so my poor father carried my, sis, my sister in front I guess I was on his back because we were so scared. And that water, you know, it was up to his waist right here. But oh my, my brother, God. my brother had the dog. The dog swam. My brother was okay. My mom held on to my, my brother. But it was frightening. I mean, I could, I could still kind of see those waves out in the front. Um, oh, my gosh. But then once we got to Niles School, we were okay. So there was no, you know, TV announcement or anything. And... I don't recall a call. All I know is my sister and I went to the window. What time of it. night? It was or night because it was, was it? dark. It, it was, was already dark, dark so I you had to do this in the yeah, dark. Yeah. yeah. I don't know oh if it was God. seven or six o'clock. I don't know. It was it wasn't late late, but it was definitely dark. So and that's where you went. Your dad had come with the with, with the, the truck, truck to truck. take you to the to Nile school. school. Right. And then as you as we went to oh and I remember along the way because you know the water was up to cars you know up to the windows and my dad would put a, uh, I guess he put my sister and I on the top of a car to rest 
for a moment before he continued on to carry us. How long was it before you could leave Niles School and so? Oh gosh, now that I don't remember. But it, I know we didn't sleep, I'm pretty sure we did not sleep there that night because my grandmother had these apartments and I guess there was, there was a vacant one, I don't recall. It must have been vacant because how could we have gotten in there so quickly? Um, and I don't remember too much, except I remember looking out the window of the apartment. You know, we were second story and just watching what was going on. And Niles says, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> and I remember that was fun for my sister and I to just be second floor. You know, we live in town, sort yeah, of like bird's eye view of yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was oh, fun. How, so the other side of Niles, <clears throat> uh, uh, you could probably drive on that. It wasn't all of the streets, or was it right. all of the streets that were? No, uh, see. <clears throat> Gosh, it probably went to Niles Boulevard then if it was still that high and Hillview in second. I don't really know too much more. Maybe my sister would remember that, but I don't remember. I just, it was just how much it had impacted right. us and that mud and that smell in yes. the house that yeah. lasted forever. Yeah, it took quite a while. Yeah. That was an amazing story. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to your birth then. Are you the oldest? No. My brother. Okay, so his name. Right. And and right. actually, when your parents got married, is your oh. mother a Niles person? No, I didn't know she that. Was, she was from San Francisco. Okay. And when you said about my grandmother coming to Niles with her apron on, my mother would come to Niles with her gloves on and her, you know, how well they dressed in San Francisco at that time. And she thought she was going to the country, you know, which she was, <laughs> I guess, from San Francisco. She, she was born and raised there. Uh, but they met through my mother's uncle, who lived in Niles, and her, my mom's, my grandfather had a produce market in San Francisco, and so my mother would work there, and then my uncle would come and they'd deliver the produce. Well, then he encouraged my, he was the Cupid, <laughs> he encouraged my dad to come with him to San Francisco. I guess he was trying to play Cupid and bring the two of them together, so my dad did meet my mother there in San Francisco, and then they were married at St. Peter and Paul's Church in San Francisco at a quarter to nine at night because the song, A Quarter to Nine, was very popular then. Oh, how <laughs> interesting. And then they came to Niles, and she did miss San Francisco for a while. It was hard for her for a while. Um, but then they lived in, so my brother was, take it back, my older sister was the first was the oldest, um, and that was a real tragedy because she died at only, I think it was 18 months. Oh, yeah, dear. it was very, very hard on my parents. Her name was Violet, Violet Di Giulio, um, and then my brother came next, and my brother Ron, Ron Di Giulio, uh, he passed away at a very young age. Sudden, well, he had a heart attack. He had two or three. It was his the third heart attack that because he had um, Hodgkin's lymphoma and went through treatment. And so it was the treatment. He was in remission from mm. the disease, but it, it weakened his heart. So he was only 40. And he worked at the agency. He was very talented, very gifted in that whole business. And my dad was so proud of him. That was hard on my dad yeah, to lose him. So he was uh, four, three years older than me. So when Ron was he born? He was born, 19, he was born December 28th, 1941. And so that, he was the second child. And then, um, then I was born three years later, and then my sister, who was only 13 months younger than me, many people used to think we were twins, in fact, she was born in February, February 20th, 1946. So we're pretty close in age. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, all in San Jose Hospital? No. Uh, well, I take that back. Let me see. Yeah, sure. All of them. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so by the time your 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 brothers and sisters were born, your father was already running the. Uh, how, what oh, was yes. his place in sure. the business? Because at that time? in 19, I think I was telling you. So that building was probably built in the early 1920s, and my grandma, he, uh, he went to Heald's Business College in Oakland, I think. Your father. My father. Okay. But my grandmother built that building, and I, she had the apartments upstairs, but I think she, she was a very enterprising woman. Her name was 
Egizia. Egizia di Giulio Raggianti. We're Italian, so. Because <laughs> she, when her husband died, Salvatore, my grandfather, uh, she did marry, remarry. But at that time, it was Salvatore and Egizia. And he always said, when there was any question about business or anything, talk to my wife, talk to Egizia. <laughs> she had good vision, uh, good businesswoman. So she built that. As with a tow service for my dad. Meanwhile, he had gone to school, uh, business college, so he started at it as a tow service, and that would have probably been around 1926, I want to say. And I was telling my grandson the other day, we were driving by, I said, see that Nile sign up there? Your, my dad, your great-grandfather, um, helped put that sign in. And so he kind of knew a little bit about, about it, my son had told him, because he had a wench and he had his truck and they pulled those huge cement slabs up, you know, and he was involved with that. And then they put a time capsule uh, under, you know, one of the uh, letters. And I remember they did look at that, I think, not too long ago. And at that time, the city, chamber of commerce, whatever, they all had their names on it. I recognize a lot of those names. Those people were friends of my dad. So anyway, he did that for several years. My uncle, this would be Arlene's dad, Chet DiGiulio, was in the Army. So he wasn't available till he finished his service and came back and then joined my dad in the business. I can't tell you what year that was. In the tow service business. Um, n I th not really. I think it was more that he had already started to sell cars. I think, um, gosh, I don't know that year. Cause Uncle Caesar is how many years? Nine years younger than my dad, I think. So, no, because I'm sure my grandmother saw that there was this empty room there, the showroom area. <laughs> she said, okay, we're going to put something in there. So I think he did start. And maybe the tow service helped get him some clients. And somewhere uh, somewhere during the war. Their, somewhere in the war. Yeah, years, you're I don't thinking. know the dates that my sister might know. And, uh, my sister's got the greater memory. <laughs> but anyway, then... He joined him when it was the car agency, and it was called the American Garage. And he sold, they sold Pontiacs and had the tow service. So it was both businesses. And then eventually it became uh, DiGiulio Pontiac. And I, no, it, it stayed, I think it was American, no, it, it did become Pontiac because of the name uh, you'll see in the pictures that I sent you where it shows the showroom and the Pontiac Indian and all. So it did become DiGiulio Pontiac, and then they added American Motors, AMC, I think it was. And so the two of them together really developed it. So the two were your dad in his name again? My dad was Louis, Louis. DiGiulio, and my uncle was, his Italian name is Caesar. Oh, that's but, why I didn't catch that. You yeah, said Caesar, Caesar, but you were talking about Chet. I always would Chet. Uncle Caesar. That's who he was to of us. Course. But he always went by Chet. Okay. Chet DiGiulio is what the community knows him by. Yeah. So the two brothers, like, merged uh, right yeah. after the war and... Right. right after he finished his service. Right, right. I think he went, he worked somewhere else first. Uh, and then, I, I don't know the year on that. I'm going to have to find that out more. But okay. But they, they were amazing. In fact, the pictures, uh, they brought back a lot of memories today when I was looking through those yes. pictures. And then he, I saw the letter that my uncle wrote to Cadillac because they wanted to take on the Cadillac uh, business as well. And they hadn't, Cadillac hadn't established yet how they were going to develop in this area. But the letter, there's the handwritten letter of my uncle and the typewritten one on a typewriter, you know? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I enjoyed looking, looking at that, right. seeing that again. So back to you, your family. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, tell me what your memories are of growing up in Niles. Oh, gosh. Oh, there's so many things that I'm sure we went through. <laughs> I, I usually ask my sister for more recall. <laughs> she remembers so much more. But I remember the great friends. In fact, one of them, Harriet, was Harriet Brown. Now it's Harriet Whitney. We've been, we were together since kindergarten. I mean, there was a group of us girls that all lived close by. We're very close. And 
we went through all through elementary and high school together, and then in college we separated. But Niles School was the heart, you know, of the community. It still is, I think. Mm -hmm. Wonderful place, and um, and it was just being able to play tetherball after school with friends, and then getting in trouble once because I was late getting home. My mother was so frightened; she thought something happened to me. But it was such, and still is, a very warm community. Great.